Hey guys, welcome to the end of a seemingly never-ending week. I just shot, finished shooting what seemed to be a never-ending episode about a trashed-out Epiphone Jamboree acoustic that I managed to rig up to pretend that it's an arch top of the floating bridge, a tailpiece, and some pickups and things. And that episode is right up there. Get some popcorn and expect to lose about a little bit over an hour of your life. But you know what? Keeps you off of uh, QVC and the dating site. So, hey, at least my stuff is wholesome. Anyway, moving right along, I get a lot of questions from subscribers about this part of a guitar, the fretboard. Why do they buzz? Oh, by the way, this is that Epiphone Jamboree junk pile. Hashtag Epiphone Jamboree junk pile. Um, anyway, back to the questions. First, the comments. People actually think I'm a professional luthier. That is almost laughable. It's like I had a dream that I lived in a trailer court. I woke up and said, you know what, maybe someday. Anyway, I am not a professional luthier. I'm a professional at making mistakes, recovering quickly, filming my recovery, and making you, the studio audience, studio audience, blah, 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 rented lips, thinking that I am a professional after having done something one half of a time. So I'm not a professional luthier. Now, People say there's fret buzz, there's dead frets, there's all kinds of things. And I do know enough about this to know one of the first challenges I had with cigar box guitars was my action was way too high. Um, you know what? I will give you a link to my playlist for all the cigar box guitar neck and and uh, knot and, and, and all intonation videos right up there. Um, look through that, but it's not like I didn't learn this the hard way. Anyway, here's what I tell people. Did you know that an adjustable bridge is adjustable? Did you know that? Profound. Did you know that you can adjust a lot of things? The bridge, the height of the bridge. Um, you can file the frets. You can change your intonation. You can do a lot of things, but where does all that start? It starts with the knot. You find that if somebody does all these things and it doesn't work and you're fretting up around the second or third fret and you've got dead frets or you can't seem to get your guitar into tune. So you got everything. you got the bridge where it needs to be uh, in comparison to the 12th fret, the distance between the 12th fret and the knot. You know what? I'm going to give you another I card to scale an intonation that goes into that deep sleep. Anyway, they get all that right and they still can't figure out what's going on and there's buzzing right up in here. It's the nut, guys. It's the nut. Start by getting the nut at the right level and then the rest of it drops into place. If you do it the other way around, everything you've done down in this area will be a waste to this. Now, what happened to this guitar? Well, you know, in my uh, attempt to turn it into a mock arch top with Ethels, I had to raise, come on, chick flick teal pointer. If you're going to be in the show, try to help. I had to raise up the fretboard. And I done did that by removing the existing fretboard and putting another fretboard underneath it. Well, guess what? What that did was it made the nut that was going to be used on the guitar useless because when you gain something that much here, you might have to gain something that much here. It, it's proportional. So I had to put a new nut on this. So we'll get close up and I'll show you what I had to do. I actually had to shim a nut blank up because a stock it wasn't... Uh, tall enough once I filed things. So I'm going to give you a quick in and out on how to shim a 
bone knot, how to measure that to do that and make sure that everything turns up right in the end. And I think you'll learn something from this one. And it will not be an hour and a half long, starting with me shutting up and getting to work right now. Let's go. Okay, guys, before I mount the camera up, let's do a quick flyby of this thing. We kept the wood on it pretty much like it was. It had a set of these Schaller tuners on it when it came. Um, we did nothing but, but put boiled linseed oil on the neck after we bolted it to the body. You got this map of Quebec, Canada A. That's got something to do with somebody there. And of course, there's the Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitar Sticker. All right, we put an old oil can on the headstock along with a 50s vintage beaver nickel from Canada and the truss rod cover which matches the mango Mc, Ronald McDonald looking uh, sunburst that the guitar kind of came with. It was bare wood when we got it. Um, did a lot of aging, put a binding job on it, made a pig guard out of a Quebec 1956 license plate. Yeah, it has volume, tone control, and a pickup. And we did everything we could to rig this thing up like an old arch top, including a tailpiece, a floating bridge. Um, we did a lot of work underneath that bridge and behind that tailpiece to make this thing structurally okay to handle the big strings that pulled off the original bridge in the first place. We put matchbooks on the neck, aged the body, and did all those things. Now, the important part here is we increased the height of the fingerboard because it was one layer thick and that certainly wouldn't give us much room for that floating bridge and to clear that pickup. So, got picked up with another fingerboard blank that was glued on after we removed the original fingerboard. Again, you'll see all of this in the hyper long video, but got to the point where we're here. The stock bridge was missing. A replacement bridge that you would order from somebody like Stumac wasn't going to work because it would be too small. And even if you took a full-size bone blank like this, by the time you rounded it off and filed it and did what you needed to do, guess what? There's barely enough there to clear it. And by the time we filed it down, it was bottoming out on the first couple frets. Of course, the higher you went down the fingerboard, the better it got. And we got the string height where it wasn't too bad at the 12th fret. But right there's a problem. Let me show you an easy way to fix it. So the first thing I want you to notice is if you look really close here, there's a dividing line. This is the original fretboard, and right there is a loud car driving by. But right there below that is the width of another fretboard. There's actually two fretboards here. So recognize that. The truss rod is there. Um, there's a deep pocket under here. But we needed to know first how wide the knot was going to be, the replacement knot, and that fits right there, and that's the way we want it, in between the end of the fingerboard, which needs to be filed down, make sure this is nice and smooth, but when you glue it up, you don't want these overlapping too much, because remember, intonation correctness starts with the distance between where the knot butts up to the end of the fingerboard and the first fret. So, what's hilarious to me is, You'll ask people, well, how tall or how much does the nut need to stick up above the end of the fingerboard? You'll hear all kinds of answers. Well, you just know, um, you know, this much. I can tell. I adjust the truss rod to take care of that. No, that's not the answer. An old Luther will give you a little bit of a advice. Whatever that fret is, you just bet you want to put something that when you put a pick, a guitar pick, a regular guitar pick, this one from Guitar 48. Come on, focus in, camera, focus in. Let's go. 
Guitar 48, I lay it there, and if I can pull, push that fret in, and just barely be touching the strings, that's right. That is not very much room. So, if you've got it sticking up the size of a quarter, that's probably not bad, but a couple quarters, the more you push down on this, the more distorted the strings get, you start having buzz down the board and you don't even know why. So, let's get a little bit more scientific about this. People will tell you that the end of the fretboard should be 0 0.020 inches or about a half a millimeter above the first fret. So, what does that mean to us? Well, it means that, guess what? I have a string file. What does that say? 0 0.020. Imagine that. And that's one of my strings down here, about the fourth string. And if I set that there like that, that's not very much. Now, I don't want to push this down when I'm doing it. I want to hold it back here. But if you look, look at that. I don't want to have to pull out my diamond bit embedded fret rocker. But I did, and that's about it right there. Okay, so what does that mean to us? Well, it means that if I take a bone blank and I carve it, round it off, and file my frets, and do everything I'm supposed to do, and put this up here, the bottom of my fret slots, I'm going to make sure it's not sitting up on there, there we go. The bottom of my fret slots cannot be below this because then it will hit the strings and I'll have no room. So, as we look at this one, we see that there's just not enough there. So, what do we do? Well, we need to glue something on here. We need to shim this. And I just happen to have something around that's just about the right height. You ever see me use these? You ever see me use just this part and the studs on, say, a license plate guitar? Hey, I'm going to give you a link to an episode about how to put a roller bridge on a license plate guitar right about there right about now we take this off we pull the thumb screw posts out and we're left with these all day long well look at that you know what if i cut this off here and here and make this the right size that would almost fit right down in there and now we're going to go to the bandsaw and i'm going to show you a trick on how to cut both of these at the same time and make them match each other like this. See that? Look at that. This fits right in here like so. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the guide is lowered to the right level. Now, I'm going to come to the edge of this and cut this off and then cut this off. Let's kill the volume and do that. Okay, now let's play Rubik's Cube. I take this piece of wood, I take this bone blank, and put it in there. Notice that that's true. See that mark? I'm going to put this behind here like this. And this holds everything tight as soon as I get it to here. Last thing I want to do is make sure that my guide is low. I'm going to turn this on. Again, notice nothing happens. 
because I haven't hit the sewing machine pedal. I'm going to line this up and I'm going to go just past the mark just a little bit. And what do you know? There we go. Okay, now this piece needs to match this piece. So I put this here like this. I line up the ends. I could even use this piece of wood if I wanted to. Put this there like that. Push them both up into the corner. Hold them. Make a mark there. And one there. Do you see that? Okay, I know where my mark is. I'm going to put this in here like so. I'm going to put this here like so. And then I am just going to do this and kick on the bandsaw. And what do you know? There we go. Now I just have to trim that off right there. Make a mark with a pencil, like so. And we are good to go. Okay, we've been to the belt sander with both of these parts. Again, notice that sits there just perfect. And now, we're going to take one of my chisels that's not expensive and from Sweden. And we're just going to make sure that there's nothing there. Like so. Okay. And then we're going to take, pull our strings down and run over this with the file again, making sure that this edge right here is true. Now we know that this knot can't be like this. We want the string grooves to be up here and this knot be in the way. So this has to be tapered off. Tapered both at the back edge and tapered downward where our slots are for our individual strings. Now when it comes to taking off that back side, we know that going to the belt sander with this clipped in here and using this kind of action on the belt sander rounds that off and gives us exactly what we're looking for. But again, do we have the clearance we need right here? No, we do not. They're the same height. That is not going to work because the nut slots are at the same level as the pick. Is it? No, they're lower. That's why there's going to be a problem. So that's where our little shim comes in, right here. Pop this in here like this. Notice that it sits nice and flat. We're going to glue that in. Then we're going to pop this up and check it out. We've got plenty of clearance now. In fact, a little too much, and we're going to have to file this down. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of CA glue. It's super glue. You don't want your fingers melting together. You just put a drop there and there. And then we'll just drop our nut onto there. We'll make sure it's nice and flat while the glue is still wet. Like so. And then we are going to tape this down and we are going to let it sit until it's dry. You do not want to glue everything on top of each other and stack things while they're drying. So we'll be a little bit patient here and let that set up. Okay, now a little shim made out of rosewood remnant of a sacrificed floating bridge base is in place and we're going to take our remember our 020 
nut file. That's what we want right above there, that much. We're going to put our nut on here, like so. And we are going to take our Let It Snow flattened out pencil and put it right there at the top of that file. And it is going to tell us where to round that bridge off. So by adding that, you can tell that it's just a tad more. This is just a tad, uh, this line is just a tad thicker than what this was here. And that's what you do. Now let's say you don't want to file that much. Look at that. You can take one of these gadgets and then you can flip this over onto here. And you can take that to a belt sander once you've got that mark. And you'll know that this much off the bottom is going to give you this much off the top. And that will sit right there. We'll get that in place. File this down. Put everything back in order. Again, a couple drops of this stuff. We'll put that there. You don't want to have it permanent, but you want to be able to come in later and knock it off. But... Oh, did you see that little trick? You take a piece of paper towel, you put it on, and let the glue run out, and then it will wick on there without making a big mess. You're welcome. Okay, the nut's in place. Let me just put this piece of tape here like this. Run it down to the bottom. And we're going to leave that sit, just like that, till it's dry. All right. Get this tape off of here. And we will get the truss rod cover back on and we will be ready to do our final filing. Let's see how this thing works now. And now what we want to do is we're going to put our trusty old guitar pick there from once again Guitar 48, Ventura, California. Hey Rob. And we're going to take, we can't use our O2O string because we're using that one right here. And anyway, you want to remember, just put your guitar pick there. And when this starts getting close to the pick on the 20 string, and of course I got uh, files that go to the other strings. And then while you're doing that, you want to remember, curve back the other way. This has got to come down. It doesn't need to be the same height. The string needs to crest right there and when you're going down here you turn this sideways just a little bit like this so there's a V for the string to enter into so it doesn't end up getting hung up and burred up on the side and wearing prematurely. All right guys that wasn't hard use a feeler gauge um, anything that gives you half of a millimeter yeah that's for you metricator but um, not difficult start at the knot and then move down the fretboard. Hey, you see the shirt? Smokestack Relics. Smokestack Relics. I'm going to give you a link to their music and website below. These guys got a coffee can guitar from me about three years ago in a dark, dirty, grungy, unspoken parking lot in the Heatherlands, the Wonderlands, the Hinterlands, the Northumberlands of Long Beach, California, cultural capital of the world, and now it's starting to show up pretty regular on um, their concert appearances. So, hey, check out my friends at Smokestack Relics. Um, that said, don't let this stuff intimidate you. Besides, we're working on junk that was in pretty much ready for the fireplace anyway. Thanks for giving me a like and a subscription, and boy, do I got some good stuff coming up. Well, I don't really, but I just say that. I mean, you guys tend to believe it, right? Okay, I will see you next time.